Okay, 8.2, proving triangles similar by the AA similarity theorem. So we're going to get to that just in just a second. Um, I just wanted to remind you about the triangle congruency theorems because we're going to be exploring some similarity theorems, um, and you don't want to confuse them. So these are the five triangle congruency theorems that we had, um, and also just some common ones that don't work. Um, these three do not work for triangle congruency. Okay, so those are the not working ones. Okay, all right, so um, the angle-angle similarity, um, triangle similarity postulate um, just says that if you have two different triangles where two sets of the um, angles are congruent, then actually you'd have the third set by the third angles theorem. But anyways, if you just have two sets, AAA doesn't work for congruency, but it does work for, um, for similarity. You don't really need the third angle because the third angles are always going to be con congruent if the first two sets are. Um, but yeah, then these two triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC would be similar, no, I said congruent, I meant similar, would be similar to triangle DEF, okay? All right. It's possible that they would be congruent, but we don't have enough information to say that. We can definitely say that they're similar. I mean, just looking at them, they don't look congruent. But Okay, so um, let's uh, try it out. Are these triangles similar? I have two triangles in this um, diagram, right? I've got the bigger triangle and the smaller one. So um, at first glance, it looks like I've only got um, one set of angles. But let's, uh, let's take a closer look at this. So here's my bigger triangle. Let's draw this separately. So this is triangle ABC. Okay, and I've got that marked like so. And then I'll make my smaller triangle orange. Okay, so I don't need to find all the angles congruent and all the sides in proportion. Now I can just look for this little shortcut where if you just have two sets of angles. Um, initially, you might think you don't have enough because we've only got one set of angles. But wait, anytime you have overlapping triangles like this, they're either going to share a side or an angle. And in this case, this angle is in the bottom right corner of both triangles. So then I can use the reflexive property of congruence to say angle C is congruent to itself and it's in both the different triangles and now I've got enough for AA. Okay, so for this, um, for part A, my answer is going to be yes, they are similar. My explanation, well, I used reflexive property of congruence. Even though I'm showing similar triangles, I still use the reflexive property of congruence and then the AA similarity theorem. Okay, so my explanation is just saying what theorems or postulates you're using, okay? All right, so let's try B. So looking at this right off the bat, I can see, hey, I've got one pair of congruent angles. 61 is not, con I mean, the 61 degree angle is not congruent to the 99 degree angle, um, but I don't want to leave it there because I want to check the, um, the missing sides. Um, so the miss missing angles, I mean. So let's, uh, let's start with this one here. So I've got, I'll call this uh, x, all right? x plus 21 plus 99 is going to have to be 180 because the triangle angle sum theorem. I'll combine those like terms. That's 180, and then I'll subtract 120. And then this comes out to 60. Okay, so this angle here is 60 degrees. So I can see now that, hey, those are not congruent. They were close, but not quite. And you could, just to be sure, find this last angle as well. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll call this, I'll call this angle Y, just so I don't use the same variable. Okay, I'll combine like terms there and subtract 82. Okay, 
Okay, and this comes out to 98 degrees. And now I can see for sure I've only got one pair of, of congruent angles. That's not enough, so this is going to be a no. But just check any missing angles because sometimes um, it will seem like you don't have um, congruent another set at the beginning, but you, you end up having one. Okay, and then my third example here, I've got uh, these, this one of these bow tie types of problems. So I'm looking for two pairs of uh, congruent angles, and hey, I can use the vertical angles theorem to say that those two are congruent. Also, I've got um, these parallel lines. So, you know, if I'm thinking about these as my tracks, when my tracks are parallel, then um, I can use a transversal to create some angle pairs. So if this is a transversal, well, this angle and this angle would be, they're on different sides of the transversal, alternate sides, they're on the inside of the tracks, interior. So those would be alternate interior angles. So I could say those two are congruent. Okay, and I've got enough right there, um, but you could also get the last set of angles. You could use the third angle theorem, or you could use this other transversal here, and then do alternate interior angles again to get that and that. Okay, and then we have more than enough, so you can take some different routes there. Um, so answer is going to be yes. Um, and we're definitely going to use AA. And to get to AA, you can use the vertical angles or not, because you could actually do this with just the alternate interiors. You're going to have to use the alternate interiors one way or another. So I'll just say alternate interior angles to get both of these two. Alternate interior angles theorem. Get the info I needed. And then AA. Okay. And... Let's move on to the next page. Just one more problem in this section. It's pretty short. Okay, um, so this says solve for X. So we've got, that's supposed to be a person right there, a six foot tall person, and we're gonna figure out how tall this tree is. And this is kind of, kind of neat because you could actually use this in real life. So let's say the sun is up here and you're standing in the shadow of the tree. So if you line up the top of your head right with the shadow, and you know how tall you are, then you can figure this out by measuring the ground distances, um, and you wouldn't have to climb up the tree to, to uh, actually measure the height of the tree. So you could do that with a building or a flagpole or whatever, right? Okay, so what we wanna do here is set up some um, similar triangles. Um, so, you know, assuming the ground is flat, then um, I know that, and actually you have to have the, the we need to have the, the tree coming straight out of the ground. If it's, if it's a tilted tree, this is not going to work, and you have to stand straight up. But assuming that we're standing in the shadow of, uh, lined up in the shadow of the sun at the same time of day, then I know that those two angles are going to be congruent to each other, okay? And then this angle is in both triangles. So the, the, we can use AA then, right? We've got this smaller triangle and then the bigger one by the AA similarity theorem. Then I know they're similar triangles, okay? So then what I can do is I can say, well, the sides of those triangles are going to be in proportion, Okay, now here is the common mistake that I see made on this. People will say, okay, well then 8 is to 12 as 6 is to x. So 8 is to 12 as 6 is to x. They'll set that up and cross multiply and solve it, but this is wrong. So don't do this. Okay, now the mistake that got made is that 12 is not the bottom of the larger triangle right? The bottom of the larger triangle is actually going to be 20. So it's really easy to make that mistake. Be careful with that, okay? So when I set up my um, proportion, I want to say 6 is to x as 8 is to 20, not as 8 is to 12, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. 6 is to x as 8 is to 20, not to 12, okay? And then I can cross multiply. You could actually reduce the front. Sometimes I like to do that. I'm going to go ahead and reduce 8 20ths first. 
doesn't matter if you do that or not. Um, four goes into both those, right? So this would re reduce to two fifths. Okay, and then cross multiply and just makes, now I've got smaller numbers to deal with. So 2x is going to equal 30, and then divide by 2, and x should equal 15. And we're uh, saying what x is here, and that's the units are going to be feet, right? So that tree would be 15 feet tall, okay? And that's it for 8.2.